I'm Janne Parvianen. I'm an artist from Helsinki, Finland. Um, I do lots of different kind of art subjects. I do light painting and light art installations. And also I do oil color painting. I teach oil color painting and drawing. And I also do graphic novels. And at the moment I'm drawing my third graphic novel called end of the Rome, we should be ready, I think, by the end of this year. And I'm also organizing at the moment two larger exhibitions in Finland of a group called Valantai with that, which is in Finnish, Bending Light. Bending it's, Light? Uh, yeah, Bending Light. Oh, that's beautiful. So. Tell us more about yourself. I know you're being humble, but tell us more about yourself, your achievements, um, you know, the exhibitions. What, what were the exhibitions that were special to you? Hmm. I think my the latest exhibition I, I really have enjoyed was in um, summer of 2019 in, in Hungary, in Pet Patch. And it was part of this um, light festival called Solnai Light Festival. Okay. And I had a larger room there where I made like an installation which was combining anamorphic drawing and light installation parts. So I wanted to create like a larger world into a room. Okay. And uh, so when did you get started with light painting? Like, how did you get started? And what is light painting? Like to people, even like myself, you know, it was, I think I, I found you. And that's when I started reading about light painting and understanding that's a beautiful um, artistic practice and um, not much talked about that said, but it's, yeah. it's very old and it's, 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 it's not as much uh, in the public eye as it should be. And it's meant for all ages, right? Like from five-year-old, you have kids who do light painting. Yeah. And, and it can range from five to 80, you know, anyone can do light painting. So what is light painting and how did you get started? Um, I actually started to do light painting by an accident because I was taking photos uh, in, in dark conditions and I had the long exposure on in my camera and I had moved, no, moved the camera accidentally while filming street lamps and they draw like beautiful light trails into the photo which I was like totally mesmerized and a couple of, a couple of tries later I tried to put the camera on on tripod and draw myself and it just like started just yeah yeah and I was totally hooked after that so basically what light painting is, it, is that the camera is taking a long exposure and in a, in a 
preferably dark conditions. And by moving light sources, you can draw or paint into the photo. So the exposure times in photos vary from a few seconds to hours. I'll go to this very important question, you know, and um, I don't know if, uh, you know, I'm, I'll be making sense, but when you talk of exposure, light, darkness, you know, improvising, you know, all of this is also part of storytelling. So which came first to you? Because I know you are a very, you wouldn't admit it yourself, but you're a very profound storyteller. You know, you have a very simple approach towards stories and narratives um, and anyone of any age can understand your works and uh, so which came first the storytelling or uh, uh, the photography the medium. yeah the photography and and I know it's a dumb question because it comes together one happens before the other yeah. so so but I know people would like to know and I know for sure I'm just going to say one sentence. I know for sure, for me, I cannot write anything if there is not one visual that inspires me. You know, one visual. You yeah. know, so for me, it's always visual first and then writing rather than vice versa. Yeah. So, so because I'm not an artist and I don't know how to paint, you know? So for me, the visual is the inspiration. What, what was it with you? For me, the storytelling Part is always the most <laughs> important. I think that is why I was struggling as a kid when, when I was like doing my first drawings or paintings because I, I couldn't tell the story I wanted. So it's always that it's like if I find a new medium, I immediately started thinking, what could I tell with this medium? That's beautiful. That is, I think, some, some of the things that uh, students at Cambridge Creation Lab would like to know that it's a simple practice and it can tell beautiful stories. And we could combine light painting with design, with stories, uh, with story ideas. And it could even be corporate inspirations, you know, like corporate officials could even train themselves just to get some inspiration and come up with some extraordinary design ideas, you know, for, for uh, yeah. the works. So tell us about some of the basic courses that you would start in 2021. I know each year we're going to offer different courses. So this year, especially this uh, season, when you start teaching in Cambridge Creation Lab, what are the courses you'll be teaching? Uh, in 2021, I'm going to start teaching about light painting and light art, kind of like a basic course, how to do it and what, how could you like get most of the technique? And we will be going through the history of light art, light painting. Even Picasso did light paintings in his like older days with Kion Mili. And uh, we'll go through the past and what's happening right now in light art and light painting. And also we will go through different techniques, how to do, what are the camera setups, how, how do you like control your camera in the darkness and all this kind of basic stuff and then go a bit deeper from there. So what are the basic prerequisites for a student? Like, let's say you're teaching a six-year-old, you know, and, you're, yeah. or, and your kids are, how old are they? Five, I think? No, my kids are um, eight, nine, and 11. Okay. And so the youngest one, when did she start? She started actually, I think, when she was one. <laughs> one again uh, led light and it is easy yeah that's so inspirational Yane, because this is something that i'm sure um a lot of design thinkers and educators you know especially virtual world has become so important now with the pandemic i think this is a great tool for parents you know to take away the boredom from their regular regimen you know in homeschooling and whatever is going on it so, is it is and actually, um, light art has been and light painting has been used lots of in, in light in art therapy lately also because when you're in the dark and you have the light source, it's you can concentrate really like effortless in what you're doing. So it's it's like a perfect tool for children. And if you want to teach children 
how to really concentrate your mind and in the doing something. So it's because it's also it, it feels like magic when you're in the darkness and you <laughs> open the light and drawing. It's like it's a combination of art and magic. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a dream sequence, you know. Yeah. And and so tell us about your first experience, your baby, with your baby, with the light. Ah, um, I have done actually lots of projects with my kids, uh, with the light art. We have done like these anamorphic drawings into our living room walls, and then started to create new layers with them using light painting. So you can do lots of stuff, and I have always wanted to kids also to like have them get their own ideas in the in the work like what would you want this this drawing to be and how we would we continue it with light what would you like what to happen there and the kids are kids are always so full of ideas and, and do, they share it with their friends? Yeah. do they share it with their friends yeah they do right yeah. so it's like um it's like a cycle, you know, when, when they work with you, they're sharing with your friends and it's, I think they're building their social circle in a different way as well. You know, it's a social skill as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what? And what also there was actually. Yeah. No, go ahead, please. There was actually studies in, in Finland lately about uh -huh. their dream, like professions of, of, the, the, of the school children of what they want to be as an adult and surprisingly light artists was one of them. <laughs> oh my God. So when yeah. in Finland did this art, art practice start like approximately? Uh, like with light art, light painting. Yes. Uh, in Finland, I think the the art group Balapaya I'm part of has been the number one source of, of like the... What's the name of, again? Balapaya. It's kind of like um, in English it's... Um, Lights meet. Lights meet. Lights meet, kind of like the locksmith okay. or what is okay, light okay. Oh, lightsmith. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've okay. been traveling a lot in, in the schools in the Helsinki region and in, all over Finland. Okay, okay. Teaching light yeah. painting. Okay, okay. So um, coming back to another question with the, with the courses, uh, what kind of camera do you think they could start with, students? Um, basically, um, any kind of DSLR camera mm -hmm. would be nice. That's always the easiest. Um, I would strongly suggest that. So, uh, if, it's a, if it's difficult, then also there's lots of applications for mobile phones nowadays. There's applications for iPhones, Androids. So mm -hmm. basically, you can do that also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But DSLR are always best quality. So. Okay. Okay, so I think, um, do you think we should have an aptitude test in the school before taking the students in as to where their skill level is, or we can just randomly place them in any course? I think it's always like, um, I think it's, it's not a problem. To Different skill levels anyway. can be combined, yeah. It's always okay. like, it might be some, something you can like good in that. Okay. And uh, so what are some of your own installations that, that are your favorites? Um, I think my own favorites are installations I have done using light painting and found objects in the, in the shooting locations. So if I go to like an abandoned factory, there's all this kind of interesting garbage lying around like pieces of, of machines and car wrecks. And I, I like to build like sculptures in the locations, kind of like a fresh robots and this kind of stuff, and then combine those with light painting elements. I know it's, you it's, went to a cave. Recently. Sorry. Uh, I know you went to a cave recently, right? A cave. Yeah. Yeah. How was the experience in a cave? Um, that was interesting. Yeah. Um, I also have been in a in a metro tunnel like um, construction site where mm -hmm. we drove with the van in inside the like half made metro tunnels, and that is an interesting interesting place to be under the sea in the, in a metro tunnel. <laughs> so your senses are different there. 
So that's already an element you can use in your artwork. So who are your favorite artists? Doesn't have to be a light painter, but who are your favorite artists who inspired you? I know you're inspired by Dutch painters, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I know also, it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I think one of the greatest inspirations in my art has been Monet. Monet. The, yeah, Claude Monet. Because, and surprisingly, I, I really, really liked his work when I was in art school and I was majoring in oil color painting. And the thing I liked most in Monet's work is the light. Are you serious? It's oh, magical yes. light in them. It is. It is. And it's, uh, you know, Yane, I'll be honest. I, I started as a, as, a, as a writer. You know? So do you have Postman or any of your graphic novels near you? Um, yes, actually. If you could share oh. some of the pages and show us. It's the my Shoe first gazing. one. Yeah. Shoe gazing. Yeah. It's actually four hundred pages long, approximately. So it's it was it has been a lot of work. I I loved reading shoe gazing because I didn't buy it uh, like as a I need to buy the hard copy, but I read it online and. It's as postman is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It, it's <laughs> just like, even if there were no words, if the were just pictures, you would like to, would you like to flip over some pages for us? Yeah. And some close ups. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's very profound. It, it could become, you know, a part of a school curriculum for kids, you know, just to enhance their thought processes, get out of some of the zones that they are in, you know, and get into yeah. hardcore reading because reading is so important. And it's like, it you know, is, it is. it's funny, I have to tell you, I am so I was brought up with no computers, you know, but now that I'm used to computers, the other day I took up, I took a book and I was trying to use my fingers to to enlarge the font. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> it's it's so bad. It's so yeah. bad. Yeah. <laughs> so it was great talking to you, Yanni. And I'm going to talk to you soon again. And yes. I hope to see you very soon teaching at Cambridge Creation Lab. Thank you. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.